Hi, welcome to Classroom Sessions with Pramod Keshavyan. Before we delve deep into the Classroom Sessions, let me first introduce myself. I am Pramod Keshavyan, Chartered Engineer and a Professional Engineer, graduated from Pondicherry University in the year 1996 and an MBA degree holder in Human Resource Management. I have close to 26 years of industry experience working in industrial sectors or verticals from telecommunication engineering at Northern Telecom to music and media development in Netscape Communications. Also worked in media conglomerate, Columbia House Company. I have a lot of years of experience in banking and finance, especially working for foreign banks like ANZ Inc. In one of my previous employment at PNP, I was instrumental in providing professional services and engineering services and worked as an MD in that firm that certified pressure vessels and boilers throughout the state of Kerala in India. Most of the projects that I, that I oversaw in the USA involved funding and budgeting and had direct impact on cross-departmental learning and training in MNCs like Columbia House Company and America Online Inc. So welcome to my classroom sessions and I hope you have a wonderful learning experience. In order for you to be notified of any new or upcoming mini webinar or classroom session, please subscribe to my channel so that you'll be updated of the latest happenings in this field. Welcome once again and I wish you a fruitful learning experience as a result. Thank you. <clears throat> what is planned change? So we'll first go through the basics of uh, what is this planned change and group dynamics and how is it effective in organizational development theory. So organizational development emerged in the 1950s and 1960s out of group dynamics and the practice of planned change. This field is based on knowledge from disciplines such as psychology, sociology, anthropology, systems theory, organizational behavior, organizational development, etc. OD practitioners are consultants trained in organizational development with underlying knowledge of behavioral sciences. Two major goals of organizational developments are improving functions of individuals, teams and total organizations and teaching organization members to continuously improve their own functioning. In short, whatever individuals, teams and organizational members do is do not realize their potential. They help improve situations which result out of situations where the potential of individuals are not recognized, teams are not recognized, and organizational members are not recognized. The following definitions of organizational development are from Beckhardt, Benes, Weil, Burke, Schmuck, and Miles. According to Beckhardt 69, Organizational development is a planned effort that is organization-wide and managed from the top, increasing effectiveness and health through planned interventions in the organizational process using behavioral science knowledge. So it's a planned effort which is organization-wide and it is managed from the top management. Benis 69 describes organizational development as a response to change a complex educational strategy. It changes beliefs, attitudes, values, and structure of organization so that they adapt to technologies, markets, and challenges. So as per Benis 69, organizational development is a response to a change in complex educational strategy. A response to change in beliefs, attitudes, values, structure of organization, etc. And they easily adapt to technologies, markets and challenges. Schmuck and Miles 1971 explains organizational development as an activity that is planned and sustained effort is behind it 
and applies behavioral science for system improvement using reflexive self-analytical methods. So that is as per Schmuck and Miles. Organizational development is an activity that is planned and there is a sustained effort behind it. And it also applies what behavioral science for system improvement using reflexive self-analytical methods. According to Vail 1994, planned process of change in an organizational culture is through utilization of behavioral science, technology, research and theory. So these are some of the definitions of organizational development. Now let us see what are the history and classifications of organizational development. So here what we do is we go through what is called man group tree with four stems. We will briefly explain what is a T group training and innovations. What is survey research and feedback methodology, which are basically the stems. T group training and innovations is one stem of the man group tree. Survey research and feedback methodology is another stem. Action research method is the third stem and Tavistock socio-technical and socio-clinical is the fourth <laughs> stem, okay? <clears throat> so systematic organizational development activities have a recent history and can be compared to a mangrove tree with four stems, which is explained. The first stem is compared to T-group training and innovations. It applies laboratory training insights to complex organizations. So that is T-group training and innovations. The second stem is actually survey research and feedback methodology. And the third stem is action research, and uh, which is basically the entire third stem. And approaches emancipating out of Tavistock socio-technical and socio-clinical, just as I was explaining, is the fourth stem. So in laboratory training, the entire process is developed in back home situations in New Britain, Connecticut, in the premises of State Teachers College, involving participants on action and group dynamics. So in T-group training, uh, Kurt Levin and his colleagues, so that's the first stem in T-group training, Kurt Levin and his colleagues gave feedback to group participants in events and workshops called T-Group, creating awareness and helping groups and group leaders focus on leadership processes. Adult education and group therapy were important in T-Group training. Also important were self-insight, conditions facilitating <laughs> group functions, interpersonal operations and skills for individuals, group and organizational behavior. So that is what is important in T-group training and innovations. <coughs> in the second stem, which is survey research and feedback methodology, the entire activity was planned and developed at Survey Research Center in University of Michigan. It discovers needs, feelings and attitudes of employees of the organization. Effective tools used in this activity are intense group discussions, procedures for utilizing results of an employee questionnaire, where survey is seen as an effective tool in introducing positive changes in the organization. So in this method, what is done? It discovers needs, feelings, and attitudes of employees in an organization. Then effective tools in the form of intensive group discussions, Procedures for utilizing results of an employee questionnaire where survey is seen as an effective tool in introducing positive changes in an organization. These methods are constantly tried. This method also deals with system of human relationship as a whole. The reports collected during this activity is fed back to the management. So after all these activities are done, the reports are collected which is based on this activity and it is fed back to the management and to the employees. Any serious employee concerns or attitudes is an area for organizational development problem solving. So that is the survey research and feedback methodology. That is some, some methods are actually applied to the employees of an organization as a whole 
and its results are fed back to the upper management. So that is what is typically done in a survey research and feedback methodology. <clears throat> in action research model and organizational development, the essentials are the same. They are action oriented, data based, calls for close cooperation between insider and outsider and are both problem solving social interactions. <clears throat> The following examples are taken to illustrate its effects. One is Gavin survey feedback program, which was conducted in a mine of about 400 employees in southwestern US. So this is just a uh, example which is taken to illustrate its effects. So whose effects? The action research model and OD, organizational development. So Gavin's survey feedback program was conducted in a mine of about 400 employees in southwestern US. The initial study revealed growing manager distrust among the consultants. This observation of increased strained relations were brought to light and remained the focus of the study. <clears throat> so that is what was uh, Gavin survey, survey feedback program, which was conducted in a mine in southwestern US. In another experiment, Shani and uh, Hard revealed through their action research project the relative less impact of less effective teams. <coughs> a parallel organization with a steering committee was set up by them to guide the project and a study group, which was constituted to do the work. The parallel organization defined data needs, conducted several iterations of collecting data and made sense of information by formulating hypothesis and suggested changes to the hospital management. So that was another experiment, which was again conducted under action research model. A different experiment was conducted by Santal Stain and Hunt where they conducted an action research model using a massive organizational development program in a Finnish banking group to gain knowledge on how the OD program was implemented in 80 largest banks in a 270 plus banking system. The program was called REMA or results management, taught top teams to better strategic planning and operational planning and better ways to manage needs and values of employees. So it was also found out as a result of the study that out of 18, uh, only 18 out of the total 80 banks were high performing and had mostly operational changes and less strategic changes. So they made a lot of changes in these banks. There were operational changes and strategic changes. So only 18 out of the total 80 banks were high performing and they, it was found out that these banks had mostly operational changes and less strategic changes. It was also revealed through the study that at six years, the bank made changes and the action research had high payoff in terms of OD interventions knowledge and performance knowledge. So that was all the research which went under the third stem, which is the action research method. The fourth stem, which is Tavistock socio-technical and socio-clinical method, the, here what happens is, in socio-technical and socio-clinical research, also called the Tavistock approach, the recent study was undertaken in University of South California and was associated with mostly socio-technical changes. So this is the fourth stem, remember. And here the study was undertaken in University of South California and it associated with mostly socio-technical changes. The attempts there created a better fit among technologies, structure and social interactions of a particular production unit in a mine, factory or an office. So there were technologies, structure and social interactions which were brought under the study of a particular production unit in a mine or factory or an office. The observations made by Cummings and Worley on socio-technical studies conducted there had two basic premises. One was that of effective work systems, optimizing social and technical parts, as well as effective work system managing boundaries to environment along with protection from external disruptions. 
So there was effective work systems and it was managing boundaries to environment. So you have set of premises, you have an environment which is affecting a particular uh, office or factory or mine. So there were boundaries drawn and an effective work system manage these boundaries to environment along with protection from external disruptions. It was really revealed in such a study that the socio-technical systems out there was participating and it was participative involving all stakeholders such as employees, engineers, staff experts and managers. So in other words, in socio-technical research, it was all about restructuring involving redesign of work systems total quality, self-selected work teams, and re-engineering. So this concludes uh, Tavistock socio-technical and socio-clinical. So, and hence, we have actually explained most of man group tree with four stems. Thank you.